So welcome to this unit 2, Vision Basics in ROS part 2, Follow a Line. So in previous unit you learned the like the very very basics of blob tracking. So in this unit you do similar blob tracking but using now OpenCV and learning the basics of using OpenCV in ROS because it has some some special some special stuff but first two things um, uh, at the end of each unit you have this project part where we do like a brief intro of what you will have to do in the project part of this that refers to this unit so in previous unit uh, we you have to do in the project a blob follower, a blob tracker of a pink ball that that traditionally eyeball robots have and you have to track that ball and go towards it. That's the main project of Unit 1. We'll talk about the project in a special video for the project so don't worry about that but we'll comment on this and because I didn't comment it on the first uh, video of unit one, then I, I comment it now. So, in in the case of this project uh, of this unit, in the project, you'll have to make Ibor Robot follow a white line in the floor until it reaches a green star. You'll know how to do this and so on, but just to comment it. So, let's use OpenCV in ROS. So. Using OpenCV in ROS has something very, very peculiar, is that you don't use OpenCV directly, but you use the OpenCV bridge. So if you go to this link, it will take you to this. And this is a package that connects OpenCV images, image system and protocols and so on with ROS. And you ask, okay, why? Okay, OpenCV, it's a fantastic library, it's the reference library for computer vision and it's used for many many things, not only computer vision but, but for example you have in the, in the main page you have a tutorial um, section and you have from basic functionality to machine learning, deep neural networks, GPU accelerated computer vision, loads of stuff. So. I highly recommend you that you take a look at this because it's really interesting. But the thing is, there's something very peculiar that OpenCV uh, has, is that it doesn't work with RGB systems. It uses BGR systems and this makes, it would be difficult to work because you you would have to change all the images that you record in Gazebo or in your simulator or in a real robot that normally are RGB convert them to BGR well OpenCV, Bri OpenCV Bridge makes that seamless without any problems but I, I comment that because there are some aspects of, of OpenCV that this comes into into the topic and it may cause some problems. Okay, so you're going to learn all this through this simulation which you have here. So you have uh, a turtle bot, a kabuki robot and it's inside this environment that has painted on the floor a yellow line with stars of different colors so we we're going to work here and in essence what we want to do is make the kabuki robot navigate through this environment only with an rgb camera no point clouds no lasers nothing just vision one camera so what he will do is follow the this yellow line and make a circuit and we have to imagine that in each 
start of each color you have different things like for example a charging station in the green uh, a place where you have to retrieve some data a red star where you have to stay for amount of time I don't know it's just an example place and this color scheme is also used in navigation in industrial environments and so on so it's not just purely theoretical and academic but also you can use it in many other places so we have this environment and the first step that we have to do is get the images from a ROS topic and show them in OpenCV. So what we, what we have to do is retrieve the image data from the Kabuki robot, from this robot, and transform it into OpenCV image classes. Here you have an example this Python script which is line follower basics and we are going to comment on this code step by step because I think it's quite interesting so here we have the import we import um, OpenCV2 bear in mind that there's OpenCV3 so this is the OpenCV2 then we import NumPy that allows us to work with arrays and so on it's really useful and it's used everywhere now, nowadays and finally we import, import from CV bridge module we import CV bridge and CV bridge error okay so we have this and then we're going to comment on the main so we execute the main and what it does is initialize this class and that's quite it and then when we finish then it destroys all, all windows then the line follower what we do is we initialize this CV bridge class we initialize a subscriber to our image topic which in this case is camera RGB image row you see it's RGB type image and it has a, a callback when you receive an image a new image you call it's automatically called this callback and what we do is get the data and we encode it in our desired encoding in this case we do it to BGR8 we'll talk about this in just a minute but essentially now the idea is that you get this data and you transform it into a CV image so we go from RGB uh, ROS gazebo environment images to OpenCV type images and from now on we work with OpenCV we don't work with ROS okay so we process the image we do whatever we want we, wa we have to do and at the end what we do is show that image Okay, so let's have a look before executing this program. Let's have a look at the images. So we have this topic that it's camera RGB image raw, which is type image. So let's have a look. As you can see here, the, the sensor messages image type has like all the topics in ROS or nearly all it has a header with a frame ID and stamp and so on then it has a height a width which is height and width of the image let's say 800 by 600 or or I don't know or 4k I mean all the dimensions then the encoding then if the image is big in the, the matrix is big Indian or not then step and the data which here it contains all the image data so let's let's do a ROS topic echo we're going to do ROS topic echo of each variable why because otherwise we'll get we'll get only the image matrix which is humongous and we won't see the the other variables so height 
Let's have a look. There we go. As you can see, it's a bit slow because uh, it depends on how it's made, but in this case, the image topic, normally it, it waits until someone asks for information. Then that's why it took a little bit longer than usual, normally topics. So you, we have a 480 height, and then um, let's get the, the width. 640 so it's uh, quite small but it's bigger than if you remember the mirror robot we had 400 by 400 this one it's a bit bigger if you do bigger the images it will be slower the algorithm so you have to try to minimize the, the size of the images as much as you can without losing any definition or losing the definition that you need for your recognition. Then the encoding, this is also very important. In this case, the images are encoded in RGB 8-bit integers. Okay, and finally, the data, which is the matrix with the image. So beware that you'll get a humongous matrix here and this is only one image there you go so I highly recommend you that you don't do a raw topic echo of the whole stream because otherwise you you'll only get this and you won't be able to stop it okay so basically it's a matrix with numbers that's an image in RGB encoding. So this is encoded in RGB, which each number is the encoding of um, an RGB color of a pixel. You know, of the 640 six, uh, by 480 pixels that you have. Okay. Okay, that's the basics. And then uh, okay, so this is the information, more or less. Then this we commented already. Then we print the image, and this one is for destroying all the windows of um, OpenCV. And you should get something like this. So let's let's see what it, what happens. So let's execute this. I've already done my package of. So let's close this. So we have my following line package. I created this package. And as dependencies, I didn't put anything because it's not necessary if you want, don't want to compile and so on, but it's highly recommendable that you, highly advis advisable that you put CV and open bridge and, and CV bridge and so on. It's not necessary to make it work. So here. I made a launch folder and a scripts folder and inside I have all the examples that we are going to talk about and here I have some launches that we'll need. In this case I'm going to launch this line um, basics folder I think. So let's reset this. Ross run my following line package. Okay. Now I go to my graphical tools. I'm going to close this. And there we have it. So this is the image stream of the RGB Im camera that we have. So, yeah, more or less. It's seen the line and the blue star there. So it works, okay. You have to do this because this is the basics. So if your program doesn't work, if this doesn't work, nothing will, will work, so it's good to, to test it. Yeah, and you get you get something like that. Okay. Now, what's this? This is it's useless. Why? Because normally what we want is making the image data more accessible, less noisy, easier for uh, our algorithms to detect what we want to detect. In this case, we're going to apply filters to the image. 
So, there are various steps. We have basically two steps, basically. Yeah? Sorry, we have three steps. We have, let's, we will crop the image, we will convert it to HSV, that we'll talk about that in a moment, and that one that I forgot, applying the mask, and we will apply a mask. So let's talk step by step what it is and what it will do. So the first step is getting the image as small as we can. That's the first step. Why? Well, because uh, you can you can have, for example, an image of this dimensions, one one thousand two hundred by one thousand twenty four, and it's a lot of pixels, and your algorithms or your computers may not be that powerful to process all that huge data, and more importantly, maybe you're processing rubbish, things that you don't need. So it's really not that efficient. So what we want to do is crop, cut the image as small as we can so that our algorithm goes fast. How do we do that? Well, you remember, this is the CV image that we got um, let me, there. This one is the CV image object that we got through the conversion from RGB to BGR, let, let's say from gazebo cameras to OpenCV cameras. So what we do is first we access the shape, which returns height, width and channels. The important is height and width. Yeah. And then here we define some parameters. You don't have to do this, but it's easier if you want to want if you want to make changes that you'll have to do them uh, in some exercises that we are going to do in a minute. And then what we do is crop it. To crop an image in a CV image is really easy because in in Python, because what we do. Uh, Images are matrix, so we access the let's say the x and the y. In this in this case, this is the height. First, it's the height, and then it's the width. So here, what we're doing is getting the entire width of the image. So from here to here, but the height we are getting just a piece, just a little part. This is, in this case, from the height divided by 2, so more or less in the middle. So we start from here. So all the things that we have before go to the rubbish. We don't use it. And then we decenter it. So if we only got the half, then we would start here. If we decenter, we start lower, so around here. And then we get until this half plus the decenter plus the rows we want to watch. So from here to here. And we would only get like the blue stars, some yellow line, and this part around here. Okay? So why do we use these values and not other values? Why 160 and 20 and not something else? Well, it's not obvious. It's just depends on the robot, depends on your algorithms, the way you want the robot to work. It depends on a lot of things, so that's why we're going to do an exercise about that, because it depends on how you like your algorithms to work. And it depends on your environment also. A lot of, of variables. Okay, next step. This one is important also. One of the problems of working with color in, uh, in robot or with, uh, with vision in general is that it depends a lot on the light that you have and RGB and BGR are, are really sensitive to um, saturation of the colors so if you have a lot of light or you don't have any light it, it's really sensitive so what we want to do is change it to um, a color 
encoding that it's less prone to errors and less sensitive to changes in lighting conditions. It's not that it's perfect and it's impervious to changes in the light, but it's more robust. This is the HSV. What we do, here you have a picture of how the idea of HSV, which is basically you have a cone and each slice is represents this circle and these are colors. And if I select one point in this circle, I'm selecting a color and all the colors beneath it if I want. But all the colors beneath that point is the same color, but it has more or less saturation of the color. That means that if I select, for example, this red, I'll get all the reds beneath. And it, it doesn't depend, it, it doesn't matter if I have more or less light. I'll get the same red. And that's really important. In simulated environments, it's not it's not a big deal if the simulation is like this with a well lit environment and so on but in realistic simulations you'll have the same problem because you don't have the same light everywhere okay and how do you do that how do you change from one to the other it's very very simple like this so you get your cropped image in this case, but any image variable, CV image, important, and you change it to this color BGR to HSV, and you change it, and you have the same image, but the HSV version. Perfect. And then the other thing is that we're going to do a filter. Once we have the HSV, we are going to filter all the colors. So we are going to filter from this one the lower, let's say I say, okay, I want a yellow and I want to track this yellow. And I consider yellow in HSV from this value to this value. Okay? As you can see, it looks like RGB or BGR, but the values are totally different. And the question is, okay, how do I know the values of, of RGB, BGR, or HSV? But basically, RGB that I need to input in some way to know this, to know these values. Okay. It depends on where you are, but in, in our case, it's very simple because we have this uh, web tool which is called Color Picker. And you can download it. Uh, I'm using Chrome, but in Firefox there's another version with another name, but it's essentially the same. So what we do is pick a color from a page. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to select. And that's it, you see? I'm getting all the colors of all the environment, of all the web page. So I click. And then I have all the information of that color. So we have the RGB values, HSV also, and we have the values here. So we can copy paste them and so on. And then what? What do I do? So I'm going to, for example, I'm going to copy this, and write it elsewhere, whatever I want. And then what I, I'm going to do is uh, we've written a very small program that what it does is convert the value that you give to HSV so that you can have an HSV value to create your uh, your lower and upper limits for the filters. So I have you can execute this code. Sorry, you can execute this code, which is. You put a BGR, very important, BGR, not RGB, so you'll have to change it, okay? Then, that you consider yellow, so this is my yellow. And then, and then what I'll do is, 
use the same value, the same function, to change it to HSV yellow. And if I print it, then I'll have the value. And then the lower and upper, I'll put it the same thing. It's the thing, same thing as we had here. Why 160 and 20? Why then this? Well, it's experience. You have to test it, see which ranges work better and so on. But the lower has to be lower than the one that you have here. And this one has to be higher or the same in this case. Okay, because this is the maximum, basically, the maximum value. Okay, so let's let's have a look. So I have this. So if I do Ross run and my following and then color HSV in this case red so red would be uh, 223 so 223 green uh, green 255 and blue 1 and this program it's, it's the same code just that it's easier for for showing you here and you have the HSV version as you can see here you have to make the calculate the conversions because it's not the same this is in percentage and this is from from 1 to 255 well 0 to 255 so you have to make the conversions but this is the value in which you will base the lower and upper filters okay understood yeah so mm, there we go so here you have an image of how it will look when you change to HSV as you can see it's more or less the same color, but this one is slightly different because uh, it, it doesn't care about the saturation. Or it cares, but it's more less sensitive to this. And then the third part is applying masks. And you say, why do I have to apply mask? And what's a mask? A mask is is a filter that what it does is remove all the things that you don't need and only leave the things that you're interested in. So in this case we are interested in the lines. And for that we use these lower yellow and upper yellow variables that we used that we set it up here. Here what we do is we generate the mask based on the image HSV, the lower yellow and the upper yellow. And if we print this mask image, what we see is white in what we consider is yellow and black where we don't consider is yellow. As you can see here, in the HSV you had some region that it was yellowish but not perfectly yellow. And here they add until you consider is yellow and the other you, you just remove it. This is used for many reasons. One, because working this, so you have this mask and then what we do is is a result which what it does is get the cropped image which would be like the part that we got from here but in the real, in the RGB colors and then applies this mask and what it does is only leave the yellow part. So it would be something like this. Okay, so black here, not green, and then yellow. Yeah? And this would be the result. The mask is this. So it's binary. It's 1, 1, 1, and then 0, 0, 0. Okay? The reason why we work with this is because it's faster. Because it's only 0, 1. It's not continuous values let's say and this allows us to go faster and calculate the centroids of the blobs it's much easier because centroids uh, calculating the centroids let's say the center of this blob 
in theory, you should use integrals, but you don't use them, obviously. And you do discrete um, algorithms. And inside them, if you only use 0 or 1, it's much easier and faster. That's the main reason why we use masks and the filters and so on. So all we did was to reach this point. So we we did this cropping to go faster and get a smaller image. We did this HSV conversion to get robust coloring. And then we, we used this mask to get this white and black. That's it. Then the final step would be to calculate the centroids, to calculate the center of this blob that you detect here. In this case, we are now going only to calculate one centroid, one blob, centroid, okay? So in this case, we are getting the mask, so this binary, not the result, but the binary, and then we calculate the moments, which what it does is do this discrete integrals and so on, it's, it's more complicated than this, and you have this links that give you, especially this one, the image moment, gives you a very good idea, or theoretical idea, of how do you calculate moments, but we won't talk about it here. Once you have them, so essentially you, with this M, you calculate the center of an X and Y coordinates. And if for some reason you have zero, zero means that you, you didn't detect anything, then you say that the center it is in the center. That's it. Okay? So, now we have where the blob is of the color that we are interested in. That's it. So now we have to draw it. So OpenCV gives you a lot of tools to paint and draw things and do contours of the objects that you detect and so on. Um, you have very good documentation here in drawing functions and you have loads of things to do. I mean, it's, you can do circles, ellipses, and you, you can do loads of stuff. So I highly recommend you that you check it out. In our case, we're going to just draw a simple circle, color red. So how do you do that? Well, you get the image where you want to draw it. You put the center where on the center of the circle, the width, the type of the line, and the color. You can leave this as it is. There are many functions, but uh, options, but but the color, it's interesting, so this is red. Why it's red? It's RGB? No, it's BGR. And this is the thickness. Um, I said that's that thickness because this makes a dot and not a circle. But if you put one, then you will get a circle. Uh, well, uh, uh, just the circumference. And then what we do here is print all the images. So the result, the mass, the HSV, and the CV image, which is the original one. Okay? And this is how it would look like. So this is the original image, then we have the HSV, that it's part of doing the cropping, and then turning it into HSV, the mask, and the result with the dot drawn on it. And finally, finally, we're getting there, we're getting there. So finally, what we are going to do is use this center values to move our robot, to turn, to make it turn. And here we're using a very simple proportional, let's say, control. It's the most basic control. It's very imprecise and it has many problems, as, as you'll see when you make it work. But it's the first thing. It's the first thing. So let's let's start, okay? Because otherwise, so here you have examples of how to move the robot. I won't get into details. It's just publishing here. Nothing very fancy, okay? And then we have this follow line step HSV. 
which is all the code that we commented part by part but combined okay so exercise number two create a python script inside your package with the provided code so this this code here and see how it works and then test with different speeds for the for the robot so here uh, in this function that essentially it's a camera callback so each time you get an image it executes all this mm, here you have linear and the angular which is the the turning try different values essentially that and then change the behavior of the robot maybe some maybe do a recovery for example sometimes the robot will get lost so do a recovery system okay so let's Let's try it. Now, pause the video and have a look. Okay, so let's have a look on how this works, more or less. Okay, so now what we're going to do is I'm going to show you uh, how this would work normally. So I'm going to test, I'm going to execute this follow line. In this case, I have for my test, I've I've set it at the center of zero, and rows to watch two hundred. So you'll get something slightly different because I'm getting the lower part of the image. So let's have a look. So I'm going to put this here. There we go. There we go. As you can see, here's the mask, and here is the result, and he's detecting more or less the centroid around here, which makes sense, it's around the center, and then it's trying to follow the yellow line. So now it will start, there we go, so now it got this line here. Why? Because I didn't tell, tell him what to do really, he, do, he only just follow line just only follows lines and that's it now that the yellow line has gone it will continue forever because I didn't do a recovery system of any kind so let's stop it so the second exercise would be um, in this case well the third exercise would be to track different colors of, of blobs you can select the red star, the green star, and the blue star. So do the three. And what you should see is something like this. So you should see that now the mask, for example, you only see in white the, for example, if you're tracking the blue star, you only see the blue star. And the result will, will have all the, in black except the blue star. Yeah, so pause the video and try it yourself. Okay. So back again, let's do it. So what we have to do is, in this case, go here, and I've changed from the yellow ones to the blue values. So you have to get the RGB value of the blue one, and then turn it to HSV with the program that we talked about, and then create some filters around it. Okay? I execute and as you can see here I'm now getting only the blue values yeah so there we go there we go so it's now you're seeing some problems that this control has, which is that it's quite difficult to control and go, but it's going to the blue star, you see? It's going to the blue star. Yeah? And there we go. Okay. 
Perfect. So next exercise. So this was changing the filter color. Okay, then try also changing the contours. I'll explain. So instead of putting a very big, so you can change, we have, I give you some options here, but basically is using the yellow, but being very strict with, uh, with uh, what is yellow and what is not, and being not that strict or even so loose that it gets all the colors. So if you use the loose color detection of the yellow, for example, that it's around here, you see that it gets a lot of colors. So it, it will get the green star and, and the yellow path, everything. And that's why it gets all of this. Or being very strict, change it to being very strict. This will mean that even the color yellow, if it's slightly different, it won't get it. Yeah. For example, you can see here in this image that it's getting, this is yellow but it's slightly, slightly different and then it doesn't get it. Yeah. How would you do this? The same thing. Working around the filters and getting, for example, like here, so putting these values or putting these other values. Try it with the yellow and try it with other colors. Yeah. Fantastic. And the fourth exercise would be change the decenter. So do it bigger, do it smaller. We have three options here. Try three if you want to try more, of course. So here you have the the first option is in the center. So you get the center and you only get very few lines, very small lines. So basically it's this and this region. Then another one that is the same center. You start from the same place, but you get more you get more elements. That would be this one here. You see? Yeah, it's just how it evolves. So you move around and because it's so small you get you lose it very fast because you're just looking at this region so when it goes past that region you lose it forever. In this case you don't lose it so you but you have to work with more image and this one is we descender it like around here and we get a very small part so we only see the yellow line when it's around here this causes many problems and you have to see which one works better for you so let's let's have a try so for example I'm going to pick again the yellow and I'm going to select let me select the filter yellow and then let's crop it so for example I'm going to select this decenter 200 and rows 20 yeah so it's really really near to the robot the detection so I'm going to save, hit save, and I'm going to reset the simulation. We have it here, and now let's follow the line. There we go. As you can see it won't see the line until it's really there and maybe it will be too late and it won't be able to turn there you go we start turning 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 returning yeah there we go we're getting the path you can see that it has problems but it's getting the path okay perfect there we go fantastic Now we have to kill it. If 
it doesn't close for any reason, then we have to list again, was node, kill, and we kill our node. Okay, and we see that it stopped. Perfect. Okay. Fantastic. So I hope you you did get to this point. So now we have a robot that can follow lines or look for colors, lots of colors of any kind. So an additional step. What happens? So the thing is that we want in our simulation to make this robot follow this line. We don't want it to go to this path if we don't if we don't want to. We want to control that. So how do we do that? Well, we do it by getting different centroids, so multiple centroids. Because now we get, as you can see in this image, we are getting a red one, which is all the yellow blobs that we're getting, he gets the center of, let's say, the center of mass of all that blobs in that image. So there's more yellow here than here, that's why it's not in the center, but more slightly to the to this side. Okay, but as you can see, now we are painting green. Centers for each one of them. So the code will be exactly the same, but we will use the mask. Remember, we're not using this yellow, black and yellow, but we're using the binary one. And we are going to use the find contours function, which is slightly different from the ones that the one that we used. Yeah. So it gets the contours and then calculates the moments for each of the contours. So for this one and for this one. Okay? And then it paints a green circle in each one of them. That's it. And if for what for any reason there's a zero division, then it doesn't paint anything. Which it makes sense. Okay? So here you have the example, so the code set here, around here. So, you have here the final exercise um, based talking about this topic of blob tracking and so on, which would be this multiple, using this multiple step, multiple centroids. So, the objective of this Exercise is when the robot faces a dilemma, like this one here. So I turn left or I turn right. Then make it turn in a way that he always goes in this circuit, stays in this circuit forever and ever. For the moment, okay? So, for example, if he goes like this and goes around here and say, hey, I have these two lines, where do I go? Then it has to go in this line. Okay? So, let's have a look. Let's see. So, have a try. When you finished, then... Or you get stuck, well come back again and we'll see um, a possible solution. Hi, so you're back, let's continue. So one possible solution would be implementing this. So you have this, we have talked about it, we are getting the contours and then looking all the contours that you get and store them in this centers array and once you have it, then what we do is look the x value of all the centroids selected and select the highest one. That would mean that you always turn to the right, always. So in this case, he will start here and then go 
to the right and then it will work all the time, all the time. Yeah? In case, in case you don't get any centers, you have to do this. So try the centers. If you don't have any, then just put in the middle, let's say, so that it goes forward all the time. It's a possible solution. You can do many, many solutions. But this is one. Just one. So let's see how it should work. So we have follow line multiple. We execute it. You see that it goes forward. Let's put this here and this here. As you can see, I'm only printing the result and the final. This makes the algorithm go faster. You see, it just selected the first one and he's there. Okay, he got the path. Now we have to wait until until it gets, so I'll fast forward the video and until we get to the the dilemma. So see you in a sec. So we're back. As you can see, he's already going to this dilemma. See that because of the proportional control, it oscillates a lot. But now you should see here that in a moment you'll get two dots, two green dots. There, yeah, it was really fast. But he got the right path. He would have got this one probably because it has more yellow in this, like in this region maybe, but he got that path. Let's see the second one. As you can see, the control is really basic, so it's giving a lot of problems because it oscillates a lot because it's proportional. But we'll see how to solve that in a moment. There we go. Whoa. And he got lost. Yeah, that happens sometimes. Okay. So, why do we need... So now this is perfect because it, we need some kind of control that allows us to move around in a smoother way. Not perfect, because you need more tuning and so on, but better. And this comes in handy because we're going to talk about the PID controller with perception. So you've seen that it oscillates a lot, the proportional control. So we need some kind of new, more sophisticated control that allows us to move smoothly. And this is PIDs. PIDs are really deep and it, it can give a lot of work. Fortunately, ROS has our backs covered because there's a PID ROS package for this. Essentially what, what it gives you is an infrastructure that allows you to control stuff using PIDs in a more user-friendly way. So here you have a uh, let's say a test, a demo of how how this works. So let's have a look. This is the PID test launch, which what it does is launch this node, which is the uh, sorry the PID control. Then it launches also an RQT plot so that we can see the values of the, the, the signals and also the RQT configure. This allows us to change the PID values on the fly while they stick up to these limits, of course, that we set up here. Okay, So here we are setting up the values of KP, KI, and KD. Also the upper limit, so the upper limit that we 
we can get of the signal that we send, up upper limit and lower limit, and the wind up limit also, then the maximum frequency and the minimum frequency in which we try to make the control. Hmm? So let's have a look. So and so here what we're doing is setting this up for this PID controller node, which is the, the basics, and then we are launching this PID control, which is the one would be our, our system that we want to control, let's say. So we launch this node, this is the basic PID controller from this package, and then we launch our system, our own system, plus some extra features to see, to graph the values and so on. So let's have a look at this PID control. Essentially, if, if you don't know anything about PIDs, you should stop the video and have a look. I think we give here a guide that it's a practical guide, it's not theoretical, but it will give you some idea of what we're doing and how to use PIDs. But essentially what you need are three things. So you set a set point, you have a state, and you have an effort. So the set point is where you want to go. Okay, in this case, in this test, we want to maintain the signal in zero, in the zero value. Then we have the state. The state is the real, the, the system how it is. So our system can be can have a value of 2, of 3, minus 1, is the state. In the case of a robot would be where how much has it turned really. And the set point is where you want to go. And then we have that control effort. So the control effort is the the effort that that you do that tries to change this state so that it has the value of the set point that's the main idea it's much more complex and much deeper but that's the main very very basic idea so this program would be our our system and what we do here we have uh, we created two functions, one that it's the sign test and one that it's the step test. These are very basic control tests. In the step test, what we do is we input uh, a step, so a constant value, and we try to go to that value. But because uh, this is a test, it's not a real system, so it will try to move there continuously until we change it. And the sine wave, it's more or less the same. So we input the sine wave in the system and we we make that this system, it's always oscillating in using a sine wave. And the effort will try to counteract that so that it gets the zero value, you see? The zero value like this one so in the step test we want the zero value but the system oscillates from value one in this case in this case so one and minus one one and minus one in this case it's a sine wave that oscillates between one i think one and minus one in a sine wave and the effort will try to counteract so it will be the inverse function more or less so let's execute this I I wrote the script here so I have the PID test here already so we're going to launch this so ROS launch um, uh, sorry uh, ROS launch my follow line and then PID test so this doesn't have to do anything to do with the robot now 
So we have to wait until it appears the graphs. There we have it. So in this case we are executing the sign test. So here we have, you can see the, the set point data is zero and the state data is the red line and the control effort data is the blue line. As you can see, while our state changes, the effort changes and tries to counteract that so that the, the final value would be zero. Yeah. So we can change with the dynamic reconfigure, we can change this. So let's have a look. So for example, we can change the proportional and we set it, you see, now the blue, the effort, goes much slower and doesn't get to the maximum value. Why? Because it's 0 0.02. Okay, now we change it again and again, works perfectly. Then we change the, the integrator. And, oh, sorry. Yeah, there we go. As you can see, there's some difference, especially at the start. And it depends on what the step would, it works better or it has more effect. Or the KD, as you can see, it's especially the difference. You see that they are not synchronized to the value. So it goes slower. Or faster to get the values yeah okay let's try the step for example so we get here the PID control and we do the step test for example we wait until it's starts the system okay and there we go so you see the state data is oscillates from minus 1 to 1 and this is the effort as you can see depending on the values that we put here it oscillates more or less so for example we can lower the kp the proportional value and it goes there. We can put more integration here and you see that it doesn't quite get to the place and maybe we can if we if we put a higher value in the KD it will go to the value faster but it also oscillates more it doesn't go to infinite or higher values just because we put a maximum value of 2 or minus 2 mm -hmm. okay so there we have it so here you have this exercise which is basically what we've done is changing the values of the test nothing very special so Try it, put this script in your package, try the, exactly the same thing that I did. And then you have this exercise 7, which is using all the knowledge that you gain from this and apply to your robot. So, control it in a way that it uses PIDs. Hmm? And plot the values, why not? So the objective is make the robot follow smoothly the lines. It's not smooth like super perfect. It's just using, if you use the PIDs, it's more than enough because otherwise, at, at the end, afterwards you can tune it and so on. So don't worry about that. So try this and when you finish or you get stuck, come back. Okay, done. So this is a solution of what you could do to do this as as i told you 
PIDs it's a deep topic so it's not easy to get these values and um, actually these values are not optimized so the robot might not go to the place that we want to for that in perception you have always these problems and for this you also need recovery situations algorithms and so on but essentially what you have to do is create a PID movement launch like this one with the values of the proportional integral and derivative values that you think work best how do you know it well basically you try trial and error or you have to do some experiments calibration systems and so on so it's not easy then you can put the the plotting system and also the RQT reconfigure just in case you want to tweak it, you want to change some values and test. Then you have the follow line with, um, with PID that launches this PID movement, so the, the PID system, and then it launches our um, line following that uses PID for the movement. And finally, the PID uh, Python script, which is exactly the same, just, just that it has this difference. So we are setting a value, we are reading, we are also setting the, so we set the set point, the place where we want to go. In this case, we want that the the centroid that we detect, if we detect a centroid, is in the middle. Okay, that's our desire. If we don't detect anything, then the centroid is in the middle, so our robot should go straight. In case it's not in the middle, our desire is that it's it's in the middle. So we try to put, let's say, this red circle in the middle all the time that's our, our control that's what we want then we have to set the value so the value the real value is where is the centroid in this case CX okay and then we have to set the value the angular velocity the value that we need here we are setting the linear speed that you can change it so if we go slower then maybe it's easier to move to control it depends it would it it will be easier because you'll change the values will change slower and you you'll get the line for more time for more seconds and that will make it easier to control and Essentially what we do is set that value and then we retrieve the effort. The value that we need to put into our system, in this case a robot, so that we move the centroid, we try to move it to the center. That's our main objective. Here we have some prints just to be able to see it properly. And then what we do is the effort, because the effort is we are inputting, so the inputs are always uh, screen positions, pixels. So we have to divide it by some value so that we have a coherent value. And then afterwards, with the KP, then we can tune it so that it's the value that we need. Okay? As I said, if this sounds strange, wait until we do the we we execute this and and if you don't understand it then you should go over your control theory to get more of a hang of how this works. But I know that even people that know about this, when you apply it to a robot, then it's something different. Okay. So, yeah, basically this is what we talked about. So let's, let's execute it so you can see more or less what's, what's going on. 
So let's, let's execute this value. Or I have it here already. And let's put this in a way that we can see everything. So here and this one, we put it here. And we hide this so that we have a bit more of room. Okay. And now we launch it. Okay, there we go. So we have the reconfigure. In case we want to change something, we're going to change it. Just for testing. So here we have it. So at present, everything is okay. Because it's not detecting anything, you see? When he starts detecting, you see? Now the blue line is the effort, and the red line is the position of the centroid. And the difference, you see? Now it went much, much smoother than with the proportional. As you can see, here we we are, we can see more or less the values that you you are getting and here because it's in the center now we have the effort is 0 and the position it's well the position that we have so for like 300 and something 120 which is the desired you see and then when it changed a bit then the effort changed a bit also And one thing that you must, when you when you tried it, you have noticed it, is that this system is really slow. What does this mean? That even if you do the control really, really fast, the robot can't move as fast. And not only that, but the, the data, the image data, is really slow. So... Mm, you have to put the values of the PID according to that and bearing that in mind that no matter how fast you go to the value the system won't update as fast there we go so now it's dividing and it went to the path you see now it's oscillating and it starts controlling a bit better why it's oscillating so much is because the, because the values of the integrated and derivative are really small. Now we are going to talk about that. So you see, now we are losing track. This is okay, because now he's not seeing anything, so it's in the center, or we suppose it's in the center. Okay, let's restart again. And this time, we're going to change values. So this time, I'm going to execute this, and and you'll see, firstly, you'll see that even without changing values, the system won't do exactly the same thing. Okay, so now, let's see what it does. Now it's detecting. It's oscillating, it's in the center, now it tries to turn again, okay, and get to the path. So more or less, it did more or less the same. Now what we're going to do is change values. So for example, I want it to go faster to the solution, but if I put this higher, what it does is it tends to oscillate more. Now no, because you're just in the center. Okay, so you see now it's oscillating a bit, just a bit. Yeah, okay, but as you can see, well, it's okay, it works okay. You see that we don't have value in the integrator if we put it higher. One of the effects is that you'll get error. So let's let's put it higher. Like that, for example. 
this this you'll see it especially when it it starts to oscillate and uh, you have very big changes then you'll get values that aren't very nice so there you go it oscillates well more or less it worked very nice okay so it depends on how it works and so on so try different values and and see if you can break it because I, I couldn't break it now but basically that's the idea the main idea and let's see what we have to do next so the next exercise this these exercises are extra so create a definitive script that can follow the correct path, so multiple centroids, and uses the PID to move smoothly. Or PID, what allows you to do is control how the robot works and moves in a more intelligent way. Yeah, This is the, the first extra exercise. The next one is create a new follow so you have to create an action or something that allows you to control more what the robot does so in this one we have create a new following script that when published in the topic for example or you, you can do an action whatever you want for example if you say okay the objective is yellow so the robot will follow the yellow if you publish red then it will follow the path until it finds the red star so bear in mind that you'll have to track multiple blobs of different colors okay the green the the same the same thing and the blue the same thing and if you don't publish anything or you publish something like stop then it will stop okay this is just to practice what you've done and give extra functionality to your robot. So, that's it. We finally finished Unit 2. So, just a comment that for the project, you can now go to the IBO project and start it. There, you, so you can do... If you didn't do the first one, then you can do the first one and the second one and the second part. So this one is there you you will have to make the eyeball robot follow a white line. So it's the same thing but it's the, the objective is that it follows the white line and finds a green star. The green, the green star means symbolizes a, a wireless charging area. So the robot has to find it and then go there, stop, and then it leaves, supposedly it would leave the charging to start. Okay? So fantastic. So give a thumbs up if you like this, this unit. Subscribe if you didn't do it at the start. And see you in the next unit, which will completely change of topics we will talk about we'll do surface and object recognition then we will do people stuff like face recognition so on but next one is object recognition and surface so see you there